Welcome to Farha's little introduction to finger symbols. Uh, if you are taking my level one or introductory class, uh, then this video is for you. So let's start with a few different names that you might hear uh, finger symbols called. Uh, the most common that you hear is zil. Um, so this is a single zil. And most of the time in the U.S. you'll hear people say these are zils. Uh, it's not the right way to make words plural in Turkish, but that's okay. Uh, you'll also hear them called sagat or sajat. Um, that is a little thing about Arabic dialects, and you don't need to worry about it too much right now. Uh, so one of the big myths that you hear sometimes is that one-hold finger symbols are Egyptian and two hold finger symbols are Turkish so that's referring to this right here where there's two slits for the elastic to go into versus these where there's just one hole and that's actually a myth um, the whether there's one hole or two slots has to do with just uh, modern versus older ways of making the finger symbols I bought these in Egypt at uh, Mahmoud Abdel Ghaffar's costume store, and they have two holes. Um, it is, however, true that the one hold ones are more common in Egypt, and uh, that has to do um, with just kind of this. They make different sounds, and sometimes that sound that comes from the one hole style is what more Egyptians are looking for. Uh, in the U.S., you might sometimes hear that the one-hold style are just cheap, crappy toys, and if you're really going to play an instrument, you need to get the two-hole style. And that's also a myth. Uh, you know, there are some like this that are definitely only good for toys or for maybe for little kids to start learning to play. Um, but, you know, there are two hold size, or styles that are also little crappy toys. So, it really just depends more on the, the actual symbol itself. Um, another myth is that some people think Egyptian dancers don't play finger symbols, and that is absolutely not true. Um, Egyptian dancers have been playing finger symbols for ever and ever and ever and they still do, and uh, it's not used as much through like an entire show the way a Turkish or a vintage American style dancer might use them, um, but they definitely do still play them. Okay, so I have a variety of symbols here, and when you're going to pick out finger symbols to start playing, you want to pick something that you like the way it sounds. That's the most important thing right now. Uh, the second most important thing is just that it feels comfortable in your hand um, and that you're not intimidated by it. So the reason is that if you like the way it sounds then you'll be more likely to practice and if you don't like the sound then you're going to you know tend to avoid practicing. So a lot of people will start with something like one of these, which are student size. They're a little lighter and they're a little smaller and um, being smaller tends to make them less intimidating. Being lighter makes them just a little easier to play uh, when you're still developing you know, the, the muscles and the dexterity with your fingers. And if you're coming to class with me, then I'll have these two rows here as loners. These are some smaller ones that I got in Egypt, and I'll let you hear them. And I got four sets of those that are all the same that um, they're going to be used in an upcoming show, so you can use them in the meantime. And you can see already the difference between these ones that are, you know, they're student size, but they're still real instruments versus these really tiny ones that are more meant as toys or for uh, for kids. 
in very small hands. Um, these ones are a pair of Saroyan, which is the brand, and they named this style the Grecian. It's got a nice little Greek key around it. And that's in the student size. So you'll notice these ones all have uh, safety pins in the elastic. That's just because they're my student loaners and I didn't want to set the elastic too small because um, I have tiny little fingers. Um, so the size and shape of the symbol along with the type of metal and the kind of heaviness or the thickness of the metal is going to change the sound of it. So this is a similar size, same metal. These are the Saroyan arabesques in the student size. And you're going to hear they sound completely different from Saroyan's arabesque, which is made from the same metal. Versus... And these are both from a high quality finger symbol maker, uh, but the shape of them changes the sound. So the arabesques again, in the student size, and then I have the arabesques in a professional size, and they're made with something called German silver, um, which is actually an alloy that doesn't have alloy that doesn't have a lot of silver in it. But that's a whole another story. And they're bigger and just have a deeper, louder sound. All the way up here, I have my Turkish Delights. And one thing often, Turkish style symbols have a little uh, deeper dome and curved rim, uh, less flat rim. But again, that's a generality. So, same style of symbol in the uh, same metal, but different size. The only reason I'm not putting these on to play them is just to go a little faster. Um, so those are most of my two hole symbols. I also have these, like I said, that I got in Egypt and they're extremely lightweight, um, which I love about them. Um, and over here, I have a pair of sagat that I got from Yasmin Henkesh's website. They're really heavy, and the nice thing about practicing with really heavy ones, once you're used to playing, is that they really build up your strength and you know your ability to speed up. So I found after I practiced with these for a while, and then went back to these, all of a sudden I was able to play much faster. Uh, but I didn't move on to these until after I'd been playing for quite a while. And these have a different sound. You'll also notice like they, the one hold finger symbols have a lot more wiggle to them, which is why a lot of people will kind of prefer the two hold ones. They're just a little easier to control. That might make them a little less intimidating for you to learn on. Um, I really enjoy playing these. Uh, but I didn't start playing them until after I'd been, I had some experience. So you might decide that you want to start with the two hold variety. So another set that I got from Yasmin Henkesh's site. Different shape, but pretty similar in their weight. And you know, it's much more of a ring, they have that nice deep bell. Another thing you might notice is a few of these have different color elastic or a bead or 
a dot of nail polish and I do that just to mark which finger I, uh, which one I've set the elastic to be big enough for my thumb on. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So over here, if you want symbols like this, these are the same set just with different elastic in them. If you want symbols like this, then I have to find somebody to be a mule for us to bring them back from Egypt. Uh, these were gotten directly from uh, Mr. Henkesh. So this is the elastic that came with them. And again, it gives even more wobble than the flat elastic. But the flat elastic is what I can get at the fabric store. So it's the same set. And then up here, um, pretty similar shape and um, just a little bit bigger and a little bit less definition between the bell and the rim. Again, these ones I got directly from Egypt. So, um, all of those are good for playing in a show, in performance, in class. Um, these ones over here, like I was saying, these aren't really going to be good, um, except for, you know, getting through a class to, like, just practice the finger movements, um, or maybe for a little kid to keep them from making too much noise. They're not really going to be any good. I'm not even sure where these came from. I just found them in a drawer one day. These ones, I think, came with one of those, like, learn how to belly dance VHS tape sets. So that's how long I've had these for. And, you know, unless I'm going to turn into, like, one of those wind-up monkey toys, they're not really good for much of anything. And these ones up here... These are kind of knockoffs of Turquoise International symbols. Turquoise International symbols themselves sound really great. I don't happen to own any. Um, these ones, I don't really like the sound of them. I don't really enjoy playing them, but I got them in a pinch and they'll do. Um, so. Um, there's also a brand that's very trusted called Zildjian, which uh, you have probably seen and if you've ever gone into even a Western music store, they make tons of symbols for drum kits and things like that. So, like I said, the main important thing is to pick one that you like the sound of. Uh, when you're practicing, no matter how much you like the sound of it, maybe your neighbors don't like the sound. So there's a couple things you can do about that. One is you can put a baby sock over the symbol. And particularly if you are playing one that has two holes, the baby socks will work. If you're playing the kind that have one hole, then a baby sock will keep it from wobbling and you won't get to practice making sure that your hands are in the right position to play them when they're wobbling. So that's why I would recommend something like this, which is a crocheted Zill muffler, Sagat muffler. Um, and this one I've kind of started to play right through, but it works just as well. <laughs> 